At the center of this painting stands a man in white with rolled up sleeves. He's surrounded by a posse that appears to be engaged in a revolt. His mouth is open wide like he's shouting. And then there's this. His right fist is clenched and in the air. This is The Uprising by Honoré Daumier. It was inspired by the French Revolution of 1848, which saw the overthrow of King Louis Philippe's monarchy. It's one of the earliest examples of a clenched fist as a symbolic and political gesture. Fast forward almost two centuries, and this salute has become synonymous with Black people and Black power in the United States. Everyone from Beyonce to Colin Kaepernick has used it. Barack Obama, Whitney Houston, Public Enemy, Muhammad Ali, Shirley Chisholm, Jesse Jackson, Angela Davis, and Huey P. Newton. So why do Black people use the power salute in the United States? The clenched raised fist showed up across the world before making its way to the United States. The international labor movements used it as early as 1917. Communists and anti-fascists were also using it in the 1920s and 30s in Europe. Fast forward to October 16, 1968 in Mexico City. This is where the Black Power Fist hit the global stage. Black American sprinters Tommy Smith and John Carlos won gold and bronze medals respectively for the 200 meter dash. As Smith and Carlos stood on the winner's podium and the Star Spangled Banner played, they did this. They kept their heads bowed and fists raised until the song ended. They walked off the field, the crowd booed, and they struck up their fist once more. During an interview with ABC, Smith said, The right glove that I wore on my right hand signified the power within Black America. The left glove my teammate John Carlos wore his left hand, made an art, my right hand to his left hand, also signify black unity. The 1968 Olympics demonstration actually started out as a plan to boycott the games. That plan was the brainchild of civil rights activist, Dr. Harry Edwards and the Olympic Project for Human Rights, of which Smith and Carlos were members. The coalition also had several demands. They called on the Olympics to disinvite South Africa and Rhodesia from the games because they practice apartheid. Remove Avery Brundage, accused of being a white supremacist as head of the International Olympic Committee. And hire more African-American coaches. Their demands weren't met and the boycott was later called off. Instead, the protest happened. As for its goal? We were demonstrating bigotry, prejudice, bias, mayhem, and the only vehicle that we had was through our endeavors on the athletic field. Although the salute was only part of the demonstration, it sent shockwaves worldwide. So why did Smith and Carlos specifically use the salute to protest? I have a dream that one day... Perhaps because the gesture was all around them. The 1968 Olympics protest was intensified by Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s assassination, which occurred just months before the game. He had supported the Olympic boycott, and all of this was happening amid the civil rights and black power movements of the 1960s and 70s. The movements overlapped, but differed. The civil rights movement took a nonviolent approach to end racial segregation and achieve economic, social, and political equality. I hope this afternoon that we will continue to see that nonviolence is the most potent weapon available to the Negro in his struggle for freedom and human dignity. The Black Power Movement took a more confrontational approach. Today it's time to stop singing and start swinging. The Black Power Movement was a response to the Civil Rights Movement. It embraced forms of self-defense and argued that desegregation wasn't enough to combat racism. At its core, the movement centered around principles expressed by Malcolm X, autonomy, self-determination, and Black pride. And so advocates of the movement, like Stokely Carmichael, the Black Panther Party, the Black Women's United Front, and the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, aka SNCC, used the clenched fist to embody those very ideas. The raised fist represented unity, anger, militancy, and resistance. It was a gesture of protest and strength. It could be seen everywhere at both civil rights and black power movement marches, protests, and rallies. And the Black Panthers are partially to thank for that. In particular, this woman. In order to begin to move on changing the oppressive conditions in the penal system in the state, 
This is academic author and activist Angela Davis. She was often photographed with a raised fist, especially in the early 70s when she was on trial for conspiracy, murder, and kidnapping charges. Davis and her fellow Black Panthers and supporters exchanged the fist to communicate that they would continue the struggle despite her capture. She was later acquitted of all charges. The Black Liberation Movement cemented the raised fist as the Black Power Salute and as a result, the symbol of an era. But the salute has reached far beyond the French Revolution and the Black Power Movement. In the U.S., the fist was adopted by the women's rights movement as well as the Gay Liberation Front, like here at the Stonewall Uprising. Outside the U.S., the raised fist showed up at Bob Marley concerts, it appeared in South Africa during apartheid, in India during the farmers' protest, and in Haiti during protests against corruption. It has become an enduring global symbol that has resonated with numerous oppressed groups, perhaps because it's innately human, a raised clenched fist, a sign of power, solidarity, resistance, and revolution. <laughs>